Hello, in this video we're going to show you around QuirkOS 3 and how quickly you can get started with our simple tool for qualitative analysis. QuirkOS 3 is an app that you download and install on your computer. You can get it just by going to www.quirkos.com forward slash get and then you can download here for Windows, Mac or Linux. It's the same across all those different platforms and there's a free 14 day trial and then a license code will unlock permanently on your computer. So let's show you around and see how that works. Once you've installed and opened the project, you'll get this list here of your recently used projects. If you've got any other data, any other projects that you've already used with Quirkos before, click the open other button here. Or if you've got other projects from the Refi QDA exchange standard to bring in from other qualitative software tools. Otherwise, click on the new project button to create a new project. You'll need to put in your name or initials here. You have the option to password protect the project as well, gives you an extra level of encryption. I'm just going to click on the create project here button, and this is going to allow me to choose a new place to save this data. So I'm going to save it on the desktop. And now in my new project, I'm able to import the data that I want um, by just clicking on the button here and choosing add sources. I could create a blank source if I want to copy and paste from other places or use the import button to bring in different sources of data from my computer. So these might be Word files or PDF files. Uh, they may be uh, transcripts of interviews. They may be documents, whatever you're needing to analyze in your project. You can also bring in Excel spreadsheet data if you've got something like a survey with open-ended responses you want to explore. So I'm going to bring in these seven sources here. These are transcripts from uh, semi-structured interviews, and you can download these example sources of data on our website. Now these have been copied into our project. We can move between them with these tabs here, and they show us the name of the different sources that we've brought into the project. If we want to describe them in any way, we use this button at the top right called the properties button. And the properties are ways which we can organize and keep track of the different sources that we have in the project. So these may be things like location. We might choose different cities. Or they might be things like uh, demographic information like age, or they might even be data type. So if we've got a project which has got things like semi-structured interviews, as well as survey responses. We can keep track of them, but also keep them all in the same project. We can also use this for any other sources of data that we might want to explore in the same project, like journal articles or policy documents. So now we've created those properties, we can select them for each source. So we can say that this person comes from Edinburgh, and this is a semi-structured interview. Using the tabs here, we can move to Matilda source here. We can say that they're from London, and this is also a semi-structured interview. And we can do this for all the different sources we need. There's no limit to the number of properties you can add. They can be numeric, or they can be discrete categories. You can add and change them at any time. Now we're going to go back to the text sources here. And what we can do is start going through and start coding. I'm just going to show you very quickly might drag and drop the sentence here, the same they've got have a very messy work history. So I'm going to drag and drop that sentence onto an empty space in the canvas area on the left here, and that's going to create a new code or theme, which in Quirkos we call a quirk. So I'm going to call this messy journey. There's a space here for a longer description, um, and we can use even emojis here. We've also got a whole series of colors that we can use to choose for each different code if we want to. Kind of green there for this one. And then we'll click Save. So that bubble has been created. It represents our code Messy Journey, and it is associated with this section of text here. We can drag and drop now other sections of text from any of the sources onto this code, and it grows a little bit bigger every time you add something, so you get a sense of what's emerging from the data. If you want to add another code, you can also click on this plus button here to create a new code. We might call this one Studies choose a different color, and we can drag and drop these bubbles to where we want. So we drag and drop some more text onto the bubble, studies bubbles here. We can also drag and drop codes on top of each other. So we might have research, 
as another option. We might have teaching. And we might call these academic work. And by moving the academic work bubble here, we can add things like studies, teaching, and research as subcategories. That way, when we double click on one of these codes, it will show us all the subcategories which are under here. And we can click on one of these to see the text that's just assigned to one or all of the different codes. Wherever we have these quotes in Quercos, we can click on the little tick button here to select them and copy and paste them with the attribution of which source they came from back into Word or wherever we're trying to write up our project. We can also add memos in our project. So with the opening the memo column here, we can actually make this column a little bit wider here, I think, by dragging and dropping here. We can select some text and drag and drop into the memo column. We can use this to use to create notes to ourselves, things we want to go back to, or if we take an approach like in vivo coding or IPA, which takes a line by line coding approach before you create codes and themes. If you're doing grounded theory, thematic analysis, emergent coding like this, you can just keep creating the codes as you need as you keep going through the data, either by dragging and dropping them into an empty space or dropping coding onto an existing theme. There's no strict limit to the number of codes and themes that you can create, but it makes sense to keep to a reasonable number, just a couple of dozen, and start organizing them by putting on top of each other. However, there are also alternative views that you can use here. So for example, you might put these into a list, and then this works much more like other qualitative software. In the same way, we can drag and drop text here, we can reorder it, change which our subcategories belong to, and we can also double click to see the text in, or right click to see some of the other options. Now I'm going to show you an example of one of our projects which we use for training and which you can download and explore yourself, as this will show some of the features when we've done a lot more coding and been through all of our sources of text. By double clicking on one of these themes now, we can see all the aspects of code assigned to this theme about vulnerabilities, as well as any memos which are assigned to them. But we can also look to see just some of those. So if we want to see just the ones on this training gap subcategory, we can click on this one and read through, not now just by source, but by code and theme as well. So we can click here to select all of these codes if we wish to, and we can tick and untick the certain codes that we want. If we wanted to copy and paste these with the attribution of where they've appeared in the data in wherever we're writing up in a thesis or a journal article, for example. The home button there will always take you back to this main view. But let's look at some of the other views which are available to us. Let's look at this code unsurprising. It might be interesting to see what aspects of text have occurred at the same time. There's no limit to the number of times we can assign one piece of text to a different code. And by looking to see how often codes occur together, for example, career choices here, occurring with the first time people did qualitative research, we can get a visualization in the overlap view by right clicking or long clicking on the bubble. So if we click on overlap view here, we'll see this unsurprising theme overlaps most of the vulnerabilities code. It also occurs with our training gap theme here. So perhaps it's unsurprising that there is a training gap. Well, now we can see the sections of text which are about two or more of these themes if we keep clicking on these bubbles. We can also use the filter view here to explore a certain subset of our data. Remember those properties we created earlier? Let's look at how those might illustrate something about our participants by location. We can select any of the different properties that we have as a filter option here, as well as any aspect of the work done. If we're collaborating with people, we can see work that's done just by one particular person, for example. But let's choose the location of our source, and let's look at the people who we interviewed who came from England. We can see there are 36 comments here about vulnerabilities and 22 about the training gap. But we can also split this screen in two, and we can see how that would compare with another location. So if we choose here Scotland, for example, now we can see 
there's quite a strong difference in how the training graph is shown here. See, there's only four here, where we have many more on the other side. But we want to read these qualitatively and go back and see the text and see how they would be explored in the qualitative way. But let's go back to the main view and look at some of the other ways that we can export and see the results of our data. One of the most popular ones is the word export, which will basically give us our transcripts back out as particular sources of text. We can then open these files in Word and see exactly how we've annotated the text here. It's a standard Word file. We've also got Excel options, which allow us to export the data and explore it in a spreadsheet way. And this will allow us to explore the data code by code, quirk by quirk, and also get exports of our memos and also any chat or any other analytical writing that we've included in the project. This also allows us to bring us in the data into other software like SPSS, R or Excel, where we might want to do more quantitative analysis of the data. There's also a report, which gives us a lot of different ways of visualizing and exploring the data. So here we can see tables of each of the different sources that we have in the project, how long they are and how much they've been used, how many different codes have been assigned to them. And then we can see for each code how often they've been used. We can see things like the description and their relationship to other codes if they've got subcategories. We've also got graphs here which show the proportion of different uh, properties which have been used and assigned in our project, as well as the sections of text in different ways. We can customize these and see other views like how codes overlap together, how often they occur together. We can also see how often in one source different codes are used and compare them in a visual way. When we're happy with how the report looks, we can print it or save it as a PDF file and also save it as a Word document. So that's a very brief overview of using Quercos 3, the new interface and the new reporting materials that we have. Do go to our website if you want any more advice or you need more in-depth documentation uh, and drop us an email if you've got any questions and queries. We're always here to help you with your qualitative research.